Sean would face down here, and I'm with a few of the members of uh, Dig- uh, Dillinger Digital Underground. Digital Underground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dillinger Escape Plan, if I can speak right. And you are? I'm uh, Shock G. <laughs> I'm Humpty. <laughs> I think it's the same person. Yeah, I think it's too. Can he be Tupac? No, but I'm the I'm the I'm the Humpty version. Of Digital Underground? Yo, yeah, Tupac, Tupac started out. He was a <laughs> dancer, backup dancer, Digital Underground. Yeah. yeah, man. Tupac. That song I get around was, uh, was yeah. It, that was, was a Digital Underground. It was supposed song. to be a Digital Underground song. Well, then, Humpty yeah. was in it. He was the one that was like st- going up still down at the underground. And he was at the pool. When come around. He was at the pool chilling with the ladies. And what do you guys do in the band? I sing. Guitar. Guitar. Excellent. Now, who is Dillinger, and uh, what was the escape plan, and did the escape be successful? Huh. Well, to escape a real cool job. Question. That's just one yeah. of the goofy questions. Well, Dillinger was a bank robber, as most people know now, from Johnny Depp film that just came out. But at the time when the band started, like 15 years ago or something like that now, um, it was just kind of one of those things where we just in cat years started. Yeah, exactly. We started a band with no intentions of doing it as a career. We didn't think anyone would like it. It wasn't like what would be a good movie. What kind of band would be cool to make? It was literally like let's just make something interesting and that kind of appeases or whatever it is we're looking for. And, it's still uh, a terrible career go, choice. Go, you know, and not that many people like jobs it. or whatever. You know. Yeah, I've actually interviewed uh, bands like uh, The Chariot and uh, Norma Jean, and they said that you guys are one of their influences as well. Well, that's pretty cool. Actually. They were like the next wave yeah. after us, you know? Like, I feel like yeah. them and Every Time I Die and, like, you know, that wave of bands. Yeah, was, like, Every Time I Die said they met at a Dylan show, like one of the Dylan shows, like very early on. It was like in the 90s, late 90s, and all those guys were at a Dylan show, I think, in uh, Buffalo. And they decided to make a band, which was pretty cool. But at any rate, the point is, is that we didn't even have a name. We didn't think about a name. It wasn't one of those things where we really thought much out with this band. So when we were gonna play our first show, and uh, Steve Evans, our <laughs> producer, no, we'll no, call no, him back no, later no. when you get into the production question. How long? <laughs> how, how, long how long till mine ring? So uh, at any rate, there was just like a documentary about John Dillinger on TV. And just literally like grabbed the name just because we needed a name for a flyer we were going to play a show we needed a name it was not thought out there wasn't much to it there was not a lot of symbolism when it comes to like our band and that name it was just a long obnoxious hard to remember annoying name so we kind of figured it fit <laughs> now in 2009 you guys decided to part ways with Relapse and start up your own label Party Smasher why did you guys decide to leave Relapse and start your own label and do you have any bands on yeah, the it, w- label? it wasn't really a decision to leave Relapse so much as we had been in a long-lasting con- contractual uh, situation with those guys. It's a great label. They're still one of the coolest labels out, um, in my opinion. Um, but it was kind of a traditional you know, record deal, which was kind of binding. It didn't give us a whole lot of uh, freedom to try new things and release our music in different ways. And in this time, in this day and age, it's obviously super important to kind of adapt with the times. So uh, when, we were, when we did have the ability to do, try new things, we figured we should take that opportunity. And the Party Smasher thing is really just kind of an umbrella name for everything that we do. Um, it could be anything. It could be music. It could be, you know, art. It could be whatever. Um, just to tie things together because we are at a time where things are so frantic and crazy and things are coming out in different ways and in, in different mediums. And, and, and um, we just feel that, like, it's important to kind of follow all those different streams but at the same time tie it together with something that people can feel comfortable with and recognize as our stamp of approval. Now your most current album, uh, Option Paralysis, which was just released in March of last year, uh, it was stated that it was one of your toughest albums that you guys have ever written. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I think where there's that two things. Where that ca- I know where that came from. That came from me, but it, it doesn't reflect the whole band. I actually think it was the easiest record. You know, not, I can't. You know, I don't write the music, but I think that the, you know Ben and Billy will say that it was. Or Ben will say that it was the easiest record musically probably that you've ever written. Right? Came fastest yeah if you, if you judge ease by like you know speed you know which isn't always the case but it did, it was a really smooth musical process the lyrical process for me was very difficult but it was more um it, it was a, a twofold thing like i knew that i had to make you know some decisions artistically you know i, re- I really felt like I, I wanted to try to push what i was doing vocally and that you know if i don't step far enough you know outside of what i've done before or take it further you know that it's 
you're never going to be allowed to. You have to do it, you know, while you're fairly early on, or still fairly young, or, or else when you do it later on, you know, no one lets you do it. And uh, my personal life was a fucking disaster around that time. You know? So like made lyric writing really intense, and like, everything I was writing was really, uh, you know, subconsciously at the time. But now when I look back on it, pretty much exactly what was going on for me, you know. And uh, it's just it was just a weird thing to a weird time in general. You know? Now you guys played uh, your song "Black Bubblegum" on Vroom Vroom Party Starters late night with Conan O'Brien. Uh, how did that come about? Getting that gig and how did it feel playing the show? And do you have any funny Conan yeah. stories? I mean, the, the process. I mean, it was one of those things where literally the, the music guy at that's the, at the show really just liked that song. There was no real strings pulled or anything like that. It was just one of those things where that guy was like a. Uh, you know, I think our song, our, our, we were submitted just as a band. He was like, I like that Black Bubblegum song. Come play it. And we're like, sure. You know, we looked at it as just almost like another show. It was weird. It was like, okay, we're going to play a show. And then, you know, there's a small deep, small room of people watching. And they pretty much were like, do your thing. As long as nobody gets hurt, you know. <laughs> It'll be rad if you guys just put on a show. And we just played the song. And then later, it kind of hit us. It was like, for me, I was like, played it, whatever, went backstage. I was like, I'm going to go eat now, you know. Yeah. And I realized, something, it hit me later. That, like, we just played and just like five minutes in front of more people probably than in reality than we ever played combined in our whole career if you combine every show we probably just play in front of more people watching that and that was kind of surreal but the process of just playing we just like oh, I just play our song it's another show you know well, it didn't seem really weird until I, until I saw it on TV that's when yeah. it looked weird to me like being there didn't feel that that strange you know Conan is super cool Max Weinberg is super super cool so I mean, it was, it was a, a really smooth process, honestly. You don't really know what's happening until they they uh, just come in the room. You, know, you got to go in in one minute. And it's, like, it's really weird. Like you're not doing anything. You're sitting around, and all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, we're going in one minute." And you're like, "Wait a minute, for real? We're going?" And they're, yeah. yeah, it's very quick. Yeah, I think even at one point before we did the show, when we were trying to figure out like what song we were do, we were like, "Oh, we, I think I think all of us really wanted to do Milk Lizard instead, just because we felt that you know it was it's still an accessible song." But it, you know, it still captures a little bit more of what Dillinger's, you know, kind of about. Um, and we, we had, I think we asked if we could do that, and they're like, no, you can do Black Bubblegum or not play at all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> those are your choices. Yeah. But uh, you know, it was, it, it was still like such an amazing. Yeah. So we were like, fuck you, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you guys have uh, such a crazy live performance, uh, which most of the time results in some type of injury. What made you get, you know, guys decide to, to go that type of route and doing crazy acts on stage? And then is there any crazy performances or injuries that stick out that you'd like to share with us and your fans? I mean, it, it was one of those things like really early on, you know, like like when we started the band, really are uh, like right now nobody, aside myself, is in the band that started the band, so the whole Dillinger like kind of live show legend thing like that it's really came from that whole attitude like I said that this is an opera this band is an opportunity for us to vent we're all normal people in college and jobs we don't expect this to be a career we don't expect anyone to like this so it was really a selfish and cathartic scenario this band to begin with and so we just like literally would play a show in front of three people and just you know we put on the same show we put on today and you know we would just really vent and go off and for like that 20 minutes or however long we were playing we just really considered it an opportunity for us not to take responsibility for our actions for, for that time like this is what we're going to do this is our time take like it or leave it we don't give a shit and um and then as the band started getting more notoriety and started like it became part of what people knew us about us having this intense live live show which I, like i said was just like maybe one or two shows a month that we got to like vent and so, um, and now it's like, okay, now every night we're playing, and this is our job and our career, and it was crazy. So, you know, the, the intentions behind that energy and all that stuff have changed and evolved throughout time. And as new guys joined the band, like, part of that was, like, they were fans of that. And they were kind of like, this is awesome. We want to be a part of that energy. And, um, you know, like, everyone, we've never said to anyone joined the band, like, when Jeff joined the band or Greg joined the band, I never said, okay, checklist, are you, are, are you nuts on stage? You know what I mean? But it's almost like, 
never, you know, it's just one of those things that when you get on that stage and the Dillinger thing takes over, it has a life of its own. It just happens. Like, I had no idea how these guys would perform, really. I had no idea what the band would become, but it still has a lot of that feel and vibe of when I first started, you know, and that's pretty cool because I know that this thing is now an entity of its own that just takes on a, a life of its, of its own, you know what I mean? Now, uh, during a January interview with uh, Metal In- Injection Livecast, it was announced you guys were in the process of writing uh, new music for either an EP or a full-length album. Can you give us and your fans some insight? Uh, what can everyone expect, and is there a title for it yet? Not really. <laughs> no, we don't have a title. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, uh, we've been pretty busy. We've actually took a really long time off recently. We, we've been off for almost like, like five, five months. months or something. And we haven't really spent a lot of time together thinking about this stuff. But now that we're on tour, we're playing these shows, and they're going so well, we definitely, uh, and, and I think we all have ideas in our heads and stuff like that. So we haven't really um, melded it into anything concrete, but I have a feeling that's going to move fairly quickly when we get home. Now, how was it performing with Nine Inch Nails during the Soundwave Festival back in 2009 on the song Wish? <laughs> fucking drag. Really? You know, uh, the other day in the office, that, you know, I was so fucking shitty being in that suck, man. But, you know, you gotta make a dollar. It's like, bring, uh, it's like bringing work home with you. you yeah. Know? It's like, no, we're, we're already done. done. We're done playing. All right, Trent. Cool, we'll come out and sing with your little band of fucking misfits. Yeah. yeah. I think I think if they stuck with it, they could have made it. I think Nice Nails, if they had stuck with it, they would have made it pretty big. And that's why we wanted to, you know, help them out. It was just weird. Really like those days with the band that there were only like seven people in the crowd. It was yeah. weird because they used to be this big band and it was kind of sad. You're like, watch, you know. I mean, what could have been, you know? Yeah. And all that could have been. Yeah. No, it was right. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> you know what? It's one of those things where like it's happened to like four or five times now, and I really don't remember a single one of them because at every time it was, like, it was insane, you know? And like. I mean, those are the best kinds of forms, it's the kinds you don't remember, but that, they were really, like, I don't remember it because of how fucking rad it was. Not because you were, like, so in the moment, and it was, like, the show was so crazy, but because it was so surreal. And it makes me happy that things like YouTube exist, because my memory of every time we play with Nine Nails, my memory of those shows is the YouTube video. Because I, I, now I can watch it and be like, oh, yeah, that, that looked cool, like, oh, we did that, oh, okay, you know, and I don't remember any of it, so... Slowly becoming every show except for him now. YouTube is pretty much going to be the memory. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, we've had the opportunity to work with two artists that pretty much um, encompass everything that I think an artist should be in this day and age. And that's like Mike Pagg and Trent Reznor in that way. And uh, couldn't have asked for a better scenario, you know, really. Two more questions. One's a uh, goofy one and then just one's a basic one. But, uh, when the world is uh, run over by, you know, taken over by zombies, what are your guys' uh, Maris? <laughs> Maris? <laughs> Maris? The gay zombies? Where's that guy? Where's that guy? Where's that guy? Oh. Yeah, he actually just killed that. Maris alarm, alarm just on. He's going to be here in like 30 seconds. Is that true? Like school driver? That, uh, I hope not. <laughs> I know for a fact what would that happen if the world became a Roman zombie? I pretty much know that fact that three dudes sitting right here will survive. Yeah, I'd be one of the last cost. motherfuckers. Yeah, there's I'd no way. Me. I've seen enough zombie movies to know how to survive. Tricks. And I know just to hang out with him. Alright, and last but not least, what does the future hold for you guys? Uh, we know that you got that new uh, album in the works there. And uh, any more videos, side projects, tours? What can yeah, your fans man, expect? I, there's a couple, I think there's probably one or two more videos coming out. Just a bunch of people are working on stuff, and we just kind of like go for it, man. We're stoked to do a video, you know. So we had some cool people working on some ideas. We had a work. Oh, that <laughs> coffee. Uh, we got a tour in the UK coming up. We got in you know, a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. And then later, a little further down the road, we're doing Soundwave again in 2012. I think so. And then we're also we working on a. Uh, uh, another <laughs> U.S. headline. Like we're, we really haven't done a real proper Dillinger headline tour yet on this record cycle. Um, so after all this, and then we're in the fall, we're gonna come back and shit. Yeah, every, shit everywhere under the sun. Yeah, and uh, yeah, excellent. Cool. If you guys have not checked out Dillinger Escape Plan, you definitely need to do it. These guys are fucking crazy. Uh, Face Down is out. Thank you, man. Thanks, man.